And of course, uh, one of the important airway diseases that we have to consider is chronic rhinosinusitis. And we know from the Galen studies and others that in Europe, about 11% of the population are affected by this de disease. Um, we tend to think of it as being uh, divided up into those with and without nasal polyps, but many of the patients are also affected by comorbidities, particularly by asthma. Now, EPOS, with which some of you will be familiar, is a rather influential uh, document looking at the evidence base and the literature for the um, etiology and management of uh, rhinosinusitis. And uh, in this, the recommendations for the treatment are uh, medical treatment are stratified according to the severity of the disease symptoms. But of course, uh, when these fail, right in the bottom right-hand corner, we still have the option of offering patients surgery. And the question that we have to ask is whether surgery, endoscopic sinus surgery, actually works for these patients, and also whether it has uh, independently an effect on some of the other comorbidities, uh, such as asthma. Now, it's virtually impossible to do a true placebo-controlled randomized trial in patients uh, with surgical techniques. And so uh, we decided, to, in collaboration with the um, Clinical Effectiveness Unit of the Royal College of Surgeons of England, to do a very large uh, prospective audit on patients undergoing surgery for CRS, undergoing endoscopic surgery. Uh, over 3,000 patients were recruited in 87 departments in England and Wales. And this involved about 538 surgeons of varying degrees of seniority. And the patients were followed up for up to five years. Um, and during that time, the primary outcome measure was a sinonasal outcome test. Um, this is a test comprising 22 questions on nasal symptoms and quality of life. If we look at the results at three months, we can see that there is an impressive improvement in the preoperative score shown in blue compared to the post-op scores in red um, in all those uh, domains, be they nasal symptoms or quality of life. And that improvement is continued throughout the follow-up period to five years and beyond um, in both those patients with and without nasal polyps. However, what becomes apparent when you look at patients is that not everybody does well despite those um, ostensibly impressive results. And we observed that one in three of the patients actually did not benefit from the surgery. And indeed, of those that did benefit, one in 10 still went on to have further problems. And that resulted in about 13% of the patients having further surgery during the follow-up period. So we decided to look at the data, again, considering just the patients who were having surgery for the first time, and to see whether there were any reasons why the outcomes could be uh, different, and stratified the patients according to the time of onset of their symptoms um, to the time of surgery. And this produced three uh, cohorts, a group of patients who had their surgery within 12 months of the onset of symptoms, a group who had their symptoms for longer than five years, and a group in between. And what's uh, striking in this uh, particular analysis uh, done by Claire Hopkins and our colleagues is that the um, improvement in the percentage change of the patients was um, much greater in the early group as compared to the late group at all the time points considered when other demographic factors and uh, the extent of surgery were taken into account. But over and above this, another observation was made, and that was that the longer patients waited for their surgery, the greater the number of asthmatics there were in the group. Now, in another uh, study uh, done on over 2,500 uh, patients by uh, Claire Hopkins and uh, colleagues, uh, we see um, another stratification. Again, this is from a large database in general practice, um, looking again at two groups, those that had their um, surgery within 12 months of the diagnosis of chronic rhinosinusitis, which uh, is the blue line, and those that waited for over five years for their surgery from the diagnosis of chronic rhinosinusitis. And if you look at the point um, against the percentage of asthmatics in these two groups, at the time of diagnosis, there isn't much to choose between the early and the late group. They're both about 21, 22%. 
But if you then look at the point at which the later group, the ones who waited over five years, um, had their surgery, over 30% of those patients had asthma as compared to 24% in the early group. So this again suggests that um, delaying nasal surgery may indeed increase the risk of developing asthma. Now, there may be many reasons, many reasons why endoscopic surgery works in the treatment of chronic rhinosinusitis, and there may be many reasons to speculate why early surgery might have a beneficial effect on the lower respiratory tract. But I think it is um, potentially quite an important and intriguing finding, and uh, we would respectfully suggest that in any future preventive strategies for asthma, that this sort of information should be factored in. Thank you very much.